Hello. So once again, my name is Mirek Suhi, and uh, right now I'm working on the copper. Previously, I worked for satellite, uh, so I have uh, a long experience with RPM packaging. Uh, and uh, during those days, I learned some tricks, and well, it's not tricks. It's always documented somewhere so you can find it uh, as usually those part when you trying to learn something which you need say okay, okay, okay is this anything I need and move on and you didn't read that bottom part of the documentation so uh, so I pick up some stuff which is useful and I would like to share it with you. Uh, I my assumption is that you are familiar with your RPM packaging? You done at least one RPM package, uh, and hopefully you are familiar with fit mock. Not I will mention briefly. Uh, this is every slide is uh, like its own slide, its own topic. So uh, if you have any question, raise your hand immediately, and we will discuss it in place. So. First slide, dynamic macros. Uh, you probably don't know that you can use uh, Lua in macros. It's uh, written as here, so you percent Lua and specify the Lua command here. Lua is an uh, in integral part of RPM, so it's not actually calling some other commands, it's no forking. Uh, it's, it's executed directly by RPM, that's good uh, advance. Uh, so if you want to create dynamic, create some provides uh, or, or requires, uh, you can specify any Lua command which will, uh, here I just use the brain, but it can run some, some other task and generate anything from DB or some files you have on Discord. Um, What's current weather at Sedaros? I don't care. So, and, and I always try to put the uh, source here. So, if you want to uh, always uh, try, if you want to learn more about this topic, uh, you, can, you can learn here uh, uh, more about this. So, one question. And I will get you scarf. If, if, uh, give you scarf if you answer. When you need to have, when you need to use Lua in RPM, in which case? No. Oh, you, can, you can always write dependencies by hand manually. Yes, complete dependency. Complete dependency. Complex. I mean, some Okay, I will give you scarf anyway, but I have something, <laughs> something uh, some other idea. Uh, it's, it's for some scriptlet. Scriptlet, right? Usually you write scriptlet in, in, in Bash. Uh, we do that usually, but for some scriptlet, you need to use Lua. Which one? Uh, because uh, when you when you don't uh, have this uh, the bash install, so, so in packages that are uh, like installed uh, in exactly, it's the pre-trans script line. because uh, usually uh, pre-trans script line, uh, is executed before the transaction start and while. It sometimes can work if you have some package uh, which is not in base. Uh, but if you are installing a uh, system from scratch, doing bare metal installation, and you have uh, the uh, you are installing that package in Kickstart, uh, then pre trans section is executed before any package, therefore any file is on the disk 
neither bash nor jirik uh, or anything, nothing. So you couldn't use anything but the Lua, which is already part of the RPM, which we got somewhere magically, but by something which are XR into our machine. And if you want to use that Lua script, you use prep, uh, you use dash p uh, and Lua, and you say, okay, this section will be broken in, in Lua. Another interesting uh, feature is triggers. We always use, uh, uh, we use post, pre, scriptlets. Uh, triggers are uh, similar to those triggers, but they are triggered when some other package is installed or uninstalled. Uh, this example uh, is triggered when send mail is installed. So you have some, your own package about uh, your mailer, but you want, in case of send mail is installed anytime, like month after my installation, then I want to trigger, uh, I want to trigger this scriptlet. So it will create a link from uh, user bin send mail, which will uh, point to my mailer. You have available triggers for uninstallation, installation, and post uninstallation. So you can do some cleanup. Your send mail uh, is smaller than version something. Yeah. 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 Well, like the version regarding this version, is it possible to run a trigger in, trigger out my case twice if, let's say, send mail is lower than version because it's free and if it's lower than version 4? So, uh, version 4, yeah. <laughs> you have multiple triggers? No, 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 not in case. I, it seems to be an error. I'm willing to provide you uh, 
test the package is our review from HMS. Uh, it's not for me. Oh, Florian is responsible for RPM. For as far as I know, as Google uh, Check Rate did a colleague, is there's, there's been a bug that has always been in RPM that it only can work with one trigger, but we didn't. To be honest, for fail, the thing is, we didn't yeah. fail the package to build, we just yes, didn't execute the second trigger. Well, and now it fails basically to build. Well, it does, I feel this right because there are lots of other issues in the yeah. which are specific there for four years. <laughs> and somebody just fixed that issue, which actually broke other things. Ah. Yeah, it did not break, break anything because the package that uh, now errors out was always broke. The, the yeah. multiple triggers were not any executed. Only a single trigger was executed. So well, so that's. Only yeah, if it is bound, just reporting and for yeah, and yeah, continue with that. But it happened. I risked, I, uh, a year yes. ago I fixed some buggy behavior in mock, uh, and yeah, but people didn't like it because they were used to that and they can't be that. But yeah, it was bad, so yeah. Yeah, it happened. So. The thing is, it's one of those old crappy code that needs to be rewritten, and we've rewritten some code, but we have not rewritten everything. Yeah. It will take a while to adapt to the A single trigger behavior is actually by design. Who's design? But it's, it's a really old design. It's, a, it's commented and documented there. <laughs> this, this is how it's supposed to work. So, yeah. so okay, so we will move to Max. Uh, don't forget that tags are in fact macros. So anything declared in preamble section is in fact macros. So for example, tag. License uh, can be used as the macro, which is funny because recently we introduced the macro license in file section, we do something else. But if you try in the build section, echo license, it will print BSD in this example. And I have to, uh, I think that reset some years ago, I tried to assign a to that macro, to name macro, and it changed uh, some behavior. That, I tried that before this presentation, and it didn't work as previously, but yeah, definitely alter some uh, other macros which use that. So in this example, if you modify name macro, it will alter the uh, behavior of uh, build root a macro, so it will install into the different build rules. So that's interesting, and you can do some tricks with that. Maybe I was to allow version of macro in the package build. I mean, I can imagine a situation where I can decide to build a couple of packages from one SRPM, which have different versions. Unfortunately, right now, it's, as far as I know, it's impossible because uh, version is find once and forever. But is it possible to no, define I think you can define version for two package to from it. Yes, but this can yeah. be version. Yeah, and I said I, I think a year ago I was able to modify name and version. I, I, I was doing some really dirty tricks with that. But before this presentation it didn't work. So yes, I, I'm not sure if, uh, <laughs> if RPM guys fix, fix some long term bug or something like that. Uh, yeah. Anyway, so savings. So the answer is not, it's not possible right now. Right now, I checked it yesterday. And it's not but but the, the way from tag to macro, it's, it works. So. Yes. Provides, yes. recommends, yes. everything is a macro. Does it really change the name of the version of the package? Yeah, yeah. Totally. So, are there plans to fix it or it's just a design decision to never remember it? Nobody knows? I don't know. I'd say it's a very awfully maintained piece of software. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's, it's a really, really old thing. But really old, so uh, habits come into place as well. <laughs> Anyways, let's move. Uh, saving states between scrapers. Uh, when you are doing uh, some layered software, uh, you usually want to do some migration of data, which is always tricky. Uh, I'm not sure if it belongs to scrapers anyway. Uh, but you usually want to do something like 
if I'm upgrading from version that to another, do something. And obviously, you couldn't do that in RPM scripts. You know, always uh, you have the dollar uh, one or this one dollar one variable. It just uh, gives you number of current installation, so it's zero if you are installing uh, to uh, one, if, uh, you know, if you are upgrading, uh, etc. Uh, but you can, uh, and it's recommended in by software guidelines, uh, there exists the directory uh, user lib, uh, no, it's var lib rpm stay, and you can do anything there, so like touch the uh, file uh, name, do something later, and in post trans you can check if that file exists and then do the conditional stuff like upgrading the data or do something else which you need when you are coming from all the version. Create and uh, users and groups. Uh, it's well documented in federal guidelines, but I always find the spec file which just basically called user add, group add, or in better case, just grab ATC passes so that if user already exists there. Remember that those users and groups can come from NIC or LDAP, so they don't need to exist at, at ATC groups, ATC passes so that at all. Uh, so it's always good to uh, execute get and groups at get and pass and ask if those user exists because it's up to get and to uh, use those NIC LDAP and it, it, it works. And only if those users or groups doesn't exist or uh, call user add or group add. So don't forget on that. Another, another hint is uh, if you are querying uh, your uh, final package, uh, what actually ships, uh, you can query query package and list, which will just list the name uh, or part, file path name. But if you use for both option, it will list also uh, those attributes and ownership which is sometimes useful uh, if you are doing some magic uh, in the install section. So you can check that before you uh, try to install that package. P say package. So you are querying the file name. So it's not installed. If you omit the P, you are installed, you are querying the package which is already installed. So you don't need that because you can use as L, obviously. Renaming package. Uh, that's always a uh, problem. Uh, if you, if you uh, renaming package, a lot of people just put their the obsolete and that's all. You should say, oh, uh, because the uh, dependency software will just say, okay, you are obsoleting foo, so I will uninstall foo and install your package. Uh, ah, you are forgetting what other package which requires you. Uh, and unless your uh, functionality is completely different, which is the case if you are in a uh, question, if you are renaming package, you probably know. So if you are just renaming and the functionality is the same, you should obsolete package and provide the old package because if somebody requires foo, you need to keep that dependency satisfied. So you should provide a foo, but not just that, but you should provide even the version and the release of, of current package. And in obsolete, you need to specify which version you are obsoleting, because if you didn't specify the version you will be obsoleting even this provides first but another reason is that you can come two years or several years from now you can come point that you are renaming package bar 
back to the pool. And you will have the problem because bar already obsolete food, so the, the old bar will obsolete the new food. Uh, 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 the, the new food will obsolete the old bar. So you, sh so you should specify the last version of the, of the package you are obsoleting. And because of the disk tag, you should not say it's smaller than 1.4, point, point, uh, uh, 3, 1.4, Sorry, 1.3, but you should say uh, 1.4. Uh, oh, actually, it should be. Yeah. I would ra rather recommend foo is smaller. Oh, uh, no, it's correct. So, sorry, I'm confused. So, once again, <laughs> this is 1.4 because it's our. So, foo, last foo is 1.3. With this tag, and we don't know what in this tag is, so we should say uh, it should be smaller or equal to 1.399999 or something like that. So we don't know what, what it is, so we should say uh, smaller than 1.4, which is our case. So, so it should be less than but not equal. Uh, it could be equal because we have this tag, but yeah, you are true. If we don't use this tag, it should be just smaller. Uh, I, I would say that just this, this case is that you just rename the package. You only only change you make that you rename the package, not that you release uh, or raise the release. In that case, the, your last package foo is still 1.0-4, and that's correct. If, it, if it's case that you just read no, the case, if, 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 if the previous version is 1.3, because if, 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 you use, if you didn't buy a version and just rename, then uh, it will not match 1.0-4-EL4, because that would be greater than, uh, than this. Anyway, I have it later in the slide. Uh, don't forget there is an RPM dev uh, package. And you have their RPM dev ver CMP, ver version compare. So you can always try to, uh, when you struggle, what's correct version should be there. Just put there those version, RPM dev ver CMP, and those version as argument, and it will tell you what is greater. So if you put there with the this tag, which is always some kind of problem, it will tell you what's what's greater, and you can uh, tune it up accordingly. This tag has If you also change the conversion scheme, you need to add also Apple for. Yeah, that's uh, I I I I removed that. Or, or or you can you can do it without that book because you remain the package. Oh, uh, uh, well, I always try to avoid the problem, but if the renamed package goes down, so uh, full was 10 point something, and the bar is suddenly 2, uh, you should specify uh, pro, at least in the provides, because you need to provide full in Epoch 1, semicolon, and, uh, and the version. Yeah. Uh, you know, I try to avoid it, but yeah, it's, it's, there is more magic. You have, you need to use epoch, and if you don't use epoch in your spec file, it's always zero. So you will not. Uh, it's not wrong if you specify it here a zero point or one point or something. Yeah. Next slide. Similarly, uh, so. It's weird, but people try uh, simulating hard. How to create simulating in your package which you are delivering? That's so uh, they, they are always asking me that how, how I create simulating. And I it was at first hard for me to comprehend as well. So, uh, but it's actually easy. Uh, you have to. Uh, Case with either relative symlinks, then you just create a symbolic symlink to uh, 
relative path and you put it in the build route where it should be as normal file. So that's, that's easy. And absolute simulates are a little bit tricky uh, because you put, them, you put them in the build route where you want them, but the absolute simulate point to normal path without the build route. So that can break things, uh, especially when you have checks and you try to check uh, because this in build root will suddenly point outside to the build root. And you don't need to have the software installed there. So it can break your things. So, but it will be correct in a runtime because when it's installed, it will, always, it will point to correct location. So, I don't so just be aware of this. Isn't there a way around that? Yeah, use relative symbols. Yeah, even if it is double dot, double, slash double dot, where you go to the root, virtually, and then move up again. So, yeah, it can be long, relatively simming, but it will work both in the root and in install. Uh, yeah, but sometimes you, for some reason, on absolute simming, then you need to break it. Ghost files. Yeah. Rarely used. Uh, people tend to forget on that. Uh, uh, we can have ghost files. Those are uh, files which are de declared that uh, they are owned by that package, but they are not installed. Uh, so they don't need exist just after the installation. Uh, but we say test our file and they are removed when the file is uh, removed, when the package is removed. Uh, they are uh, declared as person ghost in front of the file in file section. And there is one condition, it needs to exist in build root. That's like check. You, it's enough to touch them, yeah, but you need to they need to exist there. I don't know if it is some reason. It looks like another essential kind of Yeah. That's long time documented that it behaves this way. Yeah. And mostly they are used for the log files uh, or the PID files can be used. Yeah. So you don't need to ship them because just Contents is created only after the package is run, uh, but uh, and some package doesn't own them, yeah. And then you wonder where the main log belongs. This main log of what? How 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 I find that? Yeah, RPM QF. Uh, you query to which package it belongs and say nothing, yeah, because. Someone didn't uh, own that because you know, I'm not shipping that. You know? So that's, that's not the reason you should own, own that as ghost file. Uh. Uh, directories inside the run. Uh, for some time, the run is uh, mounted as TMP file system, which exists only in memory. So, if you install something there, it, stops, it ceases to exist up next reboot. So, that's known what you like, what you want. And uh, we have some mechanism. Uh, if you create a file in TMP files there, which I'm not sure to which it expands right now, uh, name of your package.com. And you create this format like directory. It can be file more uh, can be found in mount tmp files d. So directory name of the directory permissions uh, user who should own that and group and dash. I'm not sure what can be instead of that or what it is for, but basically this syntax will say. 
after mounting of slash run, uh, please create this file with this permission owned by this user and this group. Uh, so again, uh, you can uh, either ship that file as source one uh, and install it into the proper location uh, and then own that file. And uh, of course, you need to own that directory even if it ceases to exist after the next reboot. Because uh, that's other things, so it's just entry into the package DB. Yeah, RPM Lint and Fedora Review. We all knew them because we are doing picture review of other guys. Yeah, but we sometimes forget on our own package. So it's, and, and the guidelines and the system and the RPM uh, evolves. It doesn't change too much every year. But yeah, we have package, uh, we, we, we are becoming older and older every year. So it's good to run RPM Lint and Fedora Review on your packages like every 10 years or something like that. <laughs> and you will be surprised how many warnings it, it gets. So if you have some spare time, please run that and fix your old stuff. Is there a way to silence all the warnings? <laughs> well, you don't need to run that anyway, so. <laughs> I'm not sure. So it's really I just ignore that. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, I know that other links like billion have the billion in your warning, but I never. I, I don't know. Does somebody know? This looks like it should be some kind of. Some kind of what? Yeah. When it's time to check, is it in the internet somewhere? Google Translate. Yeah, but there are some warnings which are uh, false negatives, like uh, it warns that you are running dangerous command RM in your script, which sometimes you have to, or that it's unusually uh, owner or, uh, or mode of file. So yeah, it would be a nice feature for re reporting to, to maintainer of RPM link that some RPM lead in your some warning. No source RPM. That's uh, that's the feature nearly no one knows about. Uh, I I discovered very uh, randomly when I was working for yeah uh, something like that. I never knew that something like that exists. And if you if you look into the sources which work with the RPM, it's always regular expression. Look for the uh some binary RPM or source RPM, and there's rarely regular expression for no source RPM, because no one knows that it exists and what it is. So I will tell you around. Uh, it's, uh, it's intended, uh, the, the reason is, when you want to ship RPM package, we, which include or is based on the tar file, which you couldn't ship, distribute, it's permission. For example, Oracle. You couldn't distribute Oracle tar, tar file, but we all uh, use RPM uh, packages uh, with, with, with Oracle. You either create it uh, on your own and it's stay in your internal network and never leaves that, or you can share your reason on how you create the spec file. Um, you either then create just the spec file and put it on the website or your work includes some patches and then the things are complicated. Uh, so here is the stuff, no source RPM, which uh, after you build the so source RPM, which is no source RPM, contain the spec file, patches, but not the tar file itself. So when you want to rebuild it, you need to put tar file, which you get somehow, uh, into the 
RPM build slash source seeds. Then install the node source RPM. You will install the spec file uh, and patch sheets. And then you can rebuild and package or you skip call RPM build dash dash rebuild and then no source RPM package, uh, which will rebuild, rebuild that. Uh, for example, I, I done no source RPM package for some uh, uh, DOS box game distributed by uh, uh, GOG games, uh, all games, uh, because they distributed uh, DOS box games battle, ch battle chess, uh, which I wanted to play, uh, but they distributed us some wrapper around Vinex, which run those box, which run that all those games, which I found like weird because we have those box in line Linux, so I can run, run it in line. So I, I, I wanted to install it in proper place and run uh, Linux native those box in Linux. Uh, but of course I, I was unable to or not permitted to distribute the, the game itself as start. Yeah, it's not permitted. So I created no source RPM, put it on my blog, and said, okay, if somebody wanted to install Battle Chess, you can uh, download this no source RPM, put the car file aside that, and you will create your page this way. Uh, mock. So, how many of you use mock? Everybody here. Uh, so, you maybe know that uh, you need to specify the crude which you are using with dash r and then you will specify the uh, crude name which uh, translates to, to configuration file which recites an ATC mock uh, name of the crude file, the CFG. Uh, we provide uh, a lot of configuration for most uh, distribution people, uh, federal, etc. But when you want to use custom file, it was always the pain because you need to copy that file into ATC, which you need to do as a root. Uh, it's a pain. Uh, so there, there were some feature requests uh, which, like a year ago, I implemented. And right now, you can use minus r, minus r. Uh, and if the parameter uh, have trailing dot cfg then it's treat as file name with file. So you can have the configuration in your home and, and then mock will use uh, the file from your home. So you don't need to copy to ATC. Uh, is that the same as uh, dot slash? Is no, no, no. Uh, it can be even without dot slash or it can have relative file. It's, it can be anything. The important part for the mock is the uh, training CFG. Then it's treated as file name. So anything which will evaluate to file name. Uh, mock customization. So uh, by default, all mock is tunable. Uh, and all those tunables are in ATC mock uh, side defaults, commented uh, quite well. Uh, so they are uh, so explain how you use various plugins, TMP, PC, sysroot, cache, root root cache, etc. Uh, but uh, if you modify the side default CFG. Uh, then uh, you will have to solve conflicts next time you will install a new mock and we will introduce new options so will you have to uh, resolve RPM with your previous config so it's much better if you put your configuration into your home deal into dot mod user CFG and mock will read it and will actually read the uh, order side defaults then the default and then the config from the crude, like uh, Fedora 24, etc. Then we'll use the mock user CFG. And from next release of mock, there will be used even the dot config slash mock. That's only ma master right now. Yeah. Uh, does it work on a real server? Does the uh, for thing I put people server? Is there a better version of mock? 
I think that it's there for a long time, I think. So it works in around, well, definitely, yeah, because in around 7 there is, because uh, mock is not in around itself, so it's the version which we put there always, so it's the latest one. So, yeah, the, there is definitely, definitely version which works this, this one. Works. Okay. Uh, last year I done some performance check and I wonder uh, how, how fast will be building just in TMPTC plugin, which basically do mount the TM, uh, build root into, into the memory into the TMPTC. Uh, and I done some benchmarking. Uh, so, okay, it's, it's, if you use only the some files, uh, it must be fast because all those uh, packages which you don't need and the files like user share doc, which is huge, it can be swapped very fast. So, because TMPTC can be bigger than is your memory. And if it's bigger and you allocate more space there, it's swapped into the swap file. Uh, so, for small packages, I was able to reduce the build time by to 16 percent. It's like instead of an hour of building, you get like what's 16 percent from an hour? So it's like uh, 10 minutes or something like that. Uh, uh, there are small packages and big packages. Uh, in my case, it was the library office. It, uh, it was uh, reduced uh, to 70 percent, which is still still uh, quite a lot. Uh, yeah, so, and most of the packages will fit into the two gigabytes of, uh, of size of them, so, which is enough for your memory and, uh, and stuff files. Anyway, so, I highly recommend you, if you want to speed up things, just put these things into your config and your build time will decrease a lot. If you don't want, uh, for some reason, don't want to use the, the link in memory, you can use the LVM plugin. It was recently uh, done by uh, Michal, and I forget his surname. Uh, surname, uh, sorry. Uh, it was done as uh, a Google of Summer. Uh, Google Summary of Code work uh, and uh, it's another cache but for a long time in Mock there is a root cache you basically do if you install base system it will before you start installing packages it will create a tar file and put it aside so next time you don't need to install the build root the base build root uh, from packages, but it will just unpack the tar, tar file, which is much faster. But LVM uh, works differently. So first, you need to disable the root cache, because it doesn't have sense to have two caches. Uh, and you enable a LVM root, and then you specify some volume group, and in that volume group, uh, Mog will create thin pool, which is another uh, interesting feature of LVM, where you can uh, allocate more uh, data than actually is, and it works on a snapshot. So uh, instead of creating tar file, it will create the uh, uh, volume in LVM, and next time you are building, it will create a snapshot of that uh, volume, uh, a thin volume snapshot, so it means it doesn't copy the data, it just then copy the differences from the uh, original thin, uh, volume. Uh, so it, uh, you don't, if you already build root, you have two gigabytes, and then you consume one gigabyte, so you actually consume on the disk still three gigabytes because you didn't copy those two gigabytes and your another one gigabyte beside you. So we will normally use five gigabytes on your disk and walk with the root cache you'll do that but you will just create the snapshots in LVM and this is the 
the name of the pool, how it will look when you are around LBS. And I highly recommend the check size uh, because I'm not sure if the LBM guys uh, fix that, but when you have thin pool and if you allocate the whole size, bad things happen. When we started to work on that, you was even unable to remove them in the thin pool. It was basically screw that exists there for forever. Uh, that then was fixed, but still it started behaving very, very weird when you uh, made the pool. pool. Um, maybe you better also. Have you taken those for the metadata? Yeah, yeah. But, but even if you exhaust the uh, metadata, if you have plenty of metadata and exhaust the data, yeah. it, 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 a lot of errors will start popping up, yeah. Another question, can another implementation, but yeah, it waits for you to implement it with the mock. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if you know about mock shell. Uh, it's useful if you if something bad happened during deal time, you can go into the root and actually find what's happening there. Uh, and that's what I changed recently because there is crude and shell and it behaves really weird. So uh, I actually documented how it behaves and fix the behavior, fix the code because there are some places acted differently than the other places in mock. So right now it behaves that crude uh, accept parameters and do no shell expansion. Uh, uh, unless it, there is only one parameter, uh, because that's for historical reason, because people start yelling at me because it works in past and suddenly it didn't work. So, crude works without, doesn't expand the uh, asterisk, while shell shall expand the asterisk inside of the crude. So you need to quote it before calling, so it gets into the crude, and then mock will expand that while crude. If you use crude option, you will not be spammed. Okay, if you want to get something into the mock crude, you can use copy in. For example, when you are building no source RPM, which we spoke about a few slides ago, uh, you, you couldn't uh, just copy it physically into the build route uh, because it's a uh, uh, it's always clean up before you start building. So uh, you need to uh, initialize the, the crew, copy it inside, and then call to no clean, otherwise it will clean, uh, clean the build route, uh, and then you can use it. So if you need tar file or uh, uh, no source RPM, you can copy it. There. This way. Similarly, there exists copy X. So if you are scripting something using mock and you want to extract some uh, artifacts after building, you can use copy out from the uh, from the root, and you didn't need to craft that long path uh, path name yourself. Okay, mock SCM, which is separate package. And it looks like plugin, but actually it is not plugin because some part of a hard code in mock itself. But really useful stuff when you want it, it can build directly from the from the gig. So if you put uh, this long list of the options, uh, it can check out uh, from GitHub uh, repository RPM conf. It will create the tar file automatically, get your spec file, and construct uh, source RPM itself and do that. Uh, one uh, interesting thing is that uh, tomorrow Adam will have a speech about copper, and we recently implemented that in copper, so we still didn't, still didn't announce it too loudly because. There are some bugs still, but yeah, uh, right now you are able to build in copper directly from your git, and we have already hooks, so you can.
can, we can get notified from the uh, GitHub that you commit something and automatically build your package in, in copper uh, from your Git just after your comment. So, awesome feature. More about that like, tomorrow. So you need to have a spec inside the booster, right? Yeah. Now, for some people that's obstacle, but for me it's no problem. Is there any plans to implement a PC as a tag and spec file? Because that would be also an addition. What do you mean by PC as like? Well, so far uh, there are plans to do something with additional new tag, PC as You mean in RPM uh, itself? Yes. No. I don't know. That's that's question for Florian, and you may discuss that after after the presentation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but the problem is I've not yet really got down here what it should do. So actually, I already had the DCS uh, tag for some of my packages. It was not in Fedora, and they was well, nobody uses it. But indeed, the yeah. building files so and support everything. Yeah. I know that Debian has something like that, but I guess it's, it doesn't get in RPM too much priority because they have a uh, busy quite a rich uh, 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 that requires, so we have my eyes, much higher priority. So. If I, if I get a proposal which can be implemented without adding too much, I think the proposal was already done by some because uh, this VCS is already there and it's already nice to get, uh, get right down to this thing and the chances are much higher than Koji, which will build your package into those different Kojis 
for different architectures. And it will act as normal Koji, so you can repeat more config, you can do the scratch build, and it will give you the URL of the Koji where, where uh, the task is. Uh, so if you get reports that your package is broken on different architectures, try to build that a scratch build to that different architecture. Uh, that uh, those commands are part of Fedora Packager uh, package, which you probably have on your disk already, so it's available to you. It's broken and they should uh, launch. It bro no, no, it's uh, the signal go doesn't go there, so they should launch the next project to probably. Mm -hmm. oh, I have just three slides, so I will. Uh, okay. I already mentioned RPM dev uh, commands. Just uh, uh, try to run RPM dev dash and tap tap, and you will see plenty of commands which are available to you. You maybe know some of them, and you maybe not know some of them. Uh, for example, RPM dev dash bump spec will bump the uh, s uh, will create the new changelog entry for you. Will bu uh, bump the version and create the changelog, so you don't need to craft the changelog entry on yourself. Uh, RPM dev dash var cmt compares the version, so when you struggle to know which version which includes this tag or some other obscurities is higher and which is lower, then run that and pass it as arguments and then it will tell you which one is higher from RPM uh, point of view. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Uh, uh, again, RPM dev extract will extract the files in uh, source RPM, so for one time I run RPM uh, RPM to Archa, RPM to CTO, uh, source RPM, uh, pipe uh, to CPO dash VI, uh, which will extract it as well. Uh, yeah, but this is much easier. RPM that extract, extract those files from source RPM. Uh, another interesting tool is spec tool, which can query the spec for the uh, sources and patches. I found that after I, I tried to find how to get list of sources from the spec file, which is a little bit tricky because there can be some, some macros, etc. So it's not so easy how, how, how it can look from first look. So spec tool list files will list those files. There is some, some option for downloading those files. So really useful if you are building some uh, tool uh, on top of uh, RPM. Uh, yeah, and I would like to advertise the Tito, which I use a lot. And I'm not sure if you know that, but it's awesome tool if you are doing, if you are working on project and you have spec file in the directory as well, which is one of the limitation. And you want to create your RPM quickly, because if you have normal project, uh, it's painful, oh, it's not painful, but it takes some time to create the, really, the RPM and the release itself. Uh, it can take 15 minutes because you can bump up the version, create the change log, uh, uh, git archive, uh, call it correctly so the archive is always the same, uh, which can be a little bit tricky. Uh, uh, then create, uh, create, put the archive on the correct place, spec file for RPM build, uh, and finally after 15 minutes you have the binary package. Uh, Tito work on the uh, uh, 
on, on Git tree, so you have all those files un, uh, unpackaged and work directly on all of them. When you want to have release, you just call Tito Tech, which will just, according to your uh, configuration, bump up version or release, uh, and uh, create change of entry, and will create the uh, call git log uh, abbreviated, and create the change of entry and give you the startup VI, so you can remove or alter some entries, so it looks nicely, and create the git tag to that commit, uh, which is marked with the version. So you have the name, uh, similar like Google tab CEO, you do this similar stuff. So if you fire up DTKR uh, or KG or something like that, visually, you see that this commit is tagged by the version. So this is the release. And if you call build, Tito build RPM, we will just check out that tag, that git uh, hash, and create git archive, and some smart way that it's always the pristine tar, it doesn't matter if it's even timestamp, so it's always the same. Uh, and it doesn't matter if you do more commits, so if you continue in development, and Tito build dash dash RPM will always create the RPM from the target commit. So it doesn't matter how many commits there are more, unless you pass pass uh, dash dash test, which creates the RPM from the last commit. You have to commit your work if you want to test it. That's one uh, obstacle, but uh, yeah, you can commit it with any messages you want, and then it creates the it uh, automatically alter this git, this tag, and put there some version and git hash, so you know that for first you know that it's some testing package, obviously uh, from the name of the RPM. You know from which git commit it was created, and there was some uh, number magic before the git hash, which is actually number of the uh, git since, a number of commits since last tag, which uh, causes, uh, have the benefits that if you installing newer packages uh, with, with more commits, it's always greater than the oldest development version. So it's easy to install the development version uh, as well. And there are some releasers, so you can use one command, it's called Tito Release Fedora Git, which when we configure to commit to all Fedora branches. So basically when I'm uh, releasing my packages like RPM font, I will call Tito Release Fedora Git and it will check out all those branches of, of this Git in Fedora, put their sources, commit the, the spec file there, uh, and call Koji Build, automatically I build it in for, for a version I support. <coughs> so basically, I'm able to do release in like five seconds. Like. So that in our previous projects, Facebook, when we do that, we were doing like four releases per day. Uh, SCL. And that's my last slide. So I'm just a little bit longer. Uh, how many of you know what SCL stands for? Okay, how many of you uh, build some SCL package? Not too many. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so SCL stands for software collection, which is some way how you can have either old version of modules like Python, Perl, uh, in new version of Fedora. So I can have Python 2.4 in recent Fedora. Or, other way, I can have recent version of those modules in old distribution like RHEL 5 or RHEL 6. So I, have, I can have 
Python uh, 3 in RHEL 6, which is otherwise impossible. So I have I can have concurrently uh, those modules uh, on the same system, uh, which is a question if you want to do that, because we have dockers, etc. So you can you can continuize it. Uh, but for some reason, uh, some enterprises couldn't use that, and they still want to use new or old uh, version of modules on on their machines. So the solution is software collection. Uh, there's more about it uh, on website softwarecollection.org. Uh, but if you need to uh, create package which is software collection uh, positive, enable, uh, it's quite easy. Uh, you can use the spec to SCL and give the parameter of origin spec to that and it will generate new spec file which usually works or just need a, uh, only a few of tuning up. Uh, if you run that and I can show you what it will do uh, it will, the output is really ugly at first look. So I will try to do that. So give me name of some Python module. Pardon? Yeah. Okay, I probably have there some Python. Ah, yeah, I, I have Python request. Uh, yeah. So we have this uh, spec file, which is Python request, and uh, let's say I want to bundle, it, uh, build it as SCL package. Uh, which means that it will be named like Python 3.3 dash Python request. And it will be it will be installed into the slash operator slash rh slash Python 3.3 slash something. So completely different path and some magic around that. So I can run SCL to uh, spec. Sorry, spec. To SCL Python request spec uh, new spec let's name it this way and now I open that and you will notice there is a lot of uh, SCL stuff word and it's get wider in build and install section yeah, again, okay. SCL, SCL, full of, full of SCL, but if you look on that closely, you will find that this is just uh, with question marks. So if SCL prefix uh, is not defined, which basically if not SCL macro is defined, uh, is not defined, then evaluate nothing. So this is basically, it can be ignored if you are not building that for uh, SCL collection. And if if SCL collection is enabled, then it will evaluate to the name of the collection. So that will be requires Python 3.3 dash Python URL lib, something like that. Uh, and in install section, you will find something like, like this. So originally there was only this one line and that script that script put there some wrapper, SCL enable and off. What does it mean? Just, just only that uh, this command is run inside of the uh, of the collection because the collection works this way. I will show you. We have it on a software collection org.
yeah, if you run Python dash dash version, normally it will show you the version of your system Python, but if you run SCL enable Python 3.3, which enable collection Python 3.3, and you run any command, it will run into special environment, so if I run command bash, then anything I will run into the bash will be run into Python 3.3 collection, so Python dash dash version will show me Python 3. So similarly in our spec, uh, I just run there if SCL command is enabled, macro is in defined, I will run SCL enable Python 3.3 and uh, pass as argument this anything till the EA of endo file. So this will be enabled uh, run inside of the collection, which will be effectively Python 3.3 even on RHEL 6. So that's the only magic. There's a lot of characters and a lot of words, but if you look on that this closely, there is no magic and it's quite easy at the end. Oh. And that's all. That was my last slide. Yeah, that's also. Do you have some questions I was, which I was able to answer? Will the slides be available? Uh, yes, uh, I gave it uh, to DEF CONF organizers, so I assume that it will be available on DEF CONF page somewhere. Probably the recording, I'm not sure if it's this one. Uh, and I will post it on my uh, Plus account. So if you find me on the G, uh, I will post it there this evening. The links. Yeah. Do I need what? Uh, to check if that uh, specular CL to this something like I mean, uh, can I just uh, expect it to go over the paper? Or do I need to inspect it? So, should it make sense? Well, no, so the question was uh, if I can always stress the output or uh, uh, if I need some alternation of the spec uh, to SCL. Well, it depends on two things. I don't know. Uh, whether the original spec was cleanly written, because we know you can write a spec very dirty way, you will still work, work. So this generator is quite simply and it just expects some general snippets and if it finds there, just put the SCL enable around that. So, if you didn't call Python setup P and do some magic which only you know, then of course no wrapper SCL enable around that will be generated. So, that's the one part. Uh, and uh, even if you behave correctly and your spec file is complicated, like library office or tech line. Yeah, that's huge spec file. So, uh, the spec then generates this is, is just down. So, uh, <laughs> if you are doing some extraordinary stuff there, which is not usually an exception for federal guidelines, yeah, then you have to fix it. Yeah, for most packages it will work, but for most, not everyone. <laughs> Question? Yeah. Uh, about, about SCM, uh, I suppose uh, the deep wrapper has to be enabled, or it's enough? Well, that can be ordinary uh, hit. I can work even with SVN or CDS. That's basically any any uh, any any CVS tool. So it's not just a or, or does it mean that you basically can get rid of OSHIC in the 
the only one. We can get what? A bit of Porsche. I put our Jenkins doing the builds and uh, upload it to some repository. Oh, yeah, there is a releaser which can trigger builds in mock. So you can build, uh, you, you can write to release something and it will create the source RPM, send it to mock and retrieve the results. Uh, so yeah, it's, it's possible. Uh, Next question. Is there any projects that uh, might need a single spec file uh, between Rail Fedora plus SCL or do they always do the step, you know, maintain separate spec files? Uh, I didn't get this first part of the group. Do, do you know of any projects that maintain a single spec file covering RHEL, Fedora, do you need the SCL, or do you always keep them separate? Oh. Oh, for all projects I maintain, I have one spec file which we fit. So always with SCL stuff inside, or do you use the script when you need to? Yeah, uh, with the SCL. Uh, uh, yeah, you are yeah, well, yeah. SCL. Uh, well, you can definitely make SCL spec which works on both Fedora and uh, SCL enabled Trail 6. We done we done that in Catello project. Okay. So yeah, but it's definitely not uh, some automatic work from respect to SCL. So you have to manually tune it and a lot of if conditions etc. It's a bit of follow up question. When there are some specific uh, statements in that in the URL, for example, uh, what about the SCL? Because usually it's uh, but uh, when we want to change the spec file for SQL, uh, what do we do that mainly? I mainly speak about there was when we change the spec file, when we work, how you can do it before. Uh, when it was on specific matters, basically it's just to be how we deal with that. Well, if you are, if you look on that spec file, This is just, just look on that. Yeah, exactly. Uh, there is a, for example, we have this five configs, etc., et and there is an if regarding rel specifically. Well, so let's say this is we are targeting rel six with as uh, with software collections. There will be software collection, and we want to run it for Fedora as well. So you can run here if if dash. Uh, well, uh, then do this, uh, else, uh, else, oh, sorry, else do, oh, uh, what's the, okay. and if, okay. or you can run it, uh, Yeah, this way, because everything is just macro, so just think about it, how it will be expanded on the targeting platform. So, on Fedora, there will be no SCL, probably, so just think that SCL is not expanded, so SCL enable is not execute, uh, just think about that. So, so we basically have to enclose everything in SCL enable macro? Yeah. What needs to be run in SCL, just close it into SCL enabler, that, that's all. Uh, can you scroll up my little bit? There in this last thing, there was uh, more opportunity. Uh, okay. Yeah, okay. yeah it's a bit required actually. That's yeah. That's build. That's that's the same. This is execute and, and decided in the build phase. So again, important. Remember, this is in build phase, and if in build phase is defined SCL macro and therefore SCL prefix is defined, then this will be expanded to SCL 
uh, name. So if, let's say, I want to target URL 7, I would put an else there, or if I want to target just URL 6. If you are targeting URL 7, then this condition is not met. Yeah, so I could use an else. But I can remove this totally if I just want it for SEL, let's say, targeting URL 6 or something. Yeah, if you are targeting URL 7, you can remove only you can remove it completely uh, but the trick is that you uh, it's always for example when we were doing software collection in Red Hat uh, it was much easier uh, if the original uh, spec file was already SCL positive because if you have there all those SCL macros and the SCL is not defined, which is for normal RHEL or Koji is not defined, then it will behave as normal spec. But if you are making player product like Catello, then you want to make, it's, it's your dependency of your project, then you want to make it for RHEL 6 for collection, and you want to enable some collection. And if there was those SCL macros, I just take it and enable the collection and it magically works. If it was the old spec file without those macros, I have to run the spec to, uh, spec to a SCL and it was mostly works. So then I spent another weeks uh, fixing those which mostly didn't work. Yeah. So. So you can have normal package with SCL macros and it will, it will not change anything. It will be ignored. Uh, Question.
Já feedback is, uh, uh, is welcome at that address. Oh, příště si budou tam nebe. Funguje. Jak z praku. Ne, 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 vůbec, vůbec. Já, tam je. Jediný, jediná, ne, klidně, klidně můžeš na Fedoře 23, kde, a můžeš klidně i já vody instalovat. Tam je jediná věc, že uh, když buildíš třeba na Fedoře uh, pro Real 5, uh, tak dokonce v konfiguráku pro Real 5 je napsaný, že ano, používej jam, jam deprecated, a pokud ho nemáš, no, či pokud budeš na Fedoře 25, která už ho asi nebude mít, nebo něco takového, tak, 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 uh, tak on ti jediný, co ti řekne, že řekne, ano, já tam, já deprecated tady není, já klidně použiju DNF na instalaci, ale může se stát, že dělá jiný SAT solving, Protože tam je jiný solver, že? Jiný solver, takže můžu mít teoreticky buildit na základě jiných devel balíčků nebo něčeho, což to se bojí lidi jako v koži, že, jako, že my teď máme jako, si plácáme pořád po zádech, že máme reproducible builds a realengové naši jsou jako teď prostě schopní vybildit stejný balíček pro real trojku, o, stejně tak jako když si i binárně stejný, jo? O, takže to teď binárně nemusí být stejné, že se vypíše warning, akorát, že to je, může být jinakší. A když to odklikneš, tak pokračuje dál s DNF, nebo si může dát do konfigu option, která jako už příště ten warning nezobrazuje. Což pro většinu normálních lidí, co pracují, tak, tak těm to je úplně ukradem. Takže funguje to úplně krásně. Nemusíš se mít. Navíc ve Fidoři 23 je furt jen duplicate, takže fakt funguje to normálně. Já jsem tak chtěl vyprávět dvě věci, jedna nevím, ale spíš na takový velice zítra půjdeš ty? Budu tady. Jo. Nevydávej se za mě moc, ale potom dál. Kdy v kopru bude ten git, vlastně, který tam slouží jenom jako dvořiště přístupnej pomocí ten disgit. Až na to budeme mít čas. Protože tam je... Musí se to otestovat nějak a jestli vlastně ten fatpack nějak to nasměrovat. Máme jiný priority teď. Že jako pokud pošleš péč, já se na to podívám, udělám to, řeknu, jako funguje to, funguje to. Jako on tam asi nebude potřeba moc práce, ale nějaká práce, na kterou nemáme čas. Prostě teď jsme zkoušeli tady to bylní z toho gitu, což potřebujeme na něco jiného, prostě v rámci jako Red Hatu. A uh, jo, takže a pro SCL a je třeba něco nějak ještě nastavovat nebo musíš dát, uh, když dáš, uh, uh, je to, když se podíváš na Wikinu, uh, tak tutoriál, tak dva slidy před koncem, tam jsou fotky vždycky screenshoty a je ukázaný, jak se to dělá, tak tam jsou SCL ukázaný. V podstatě jde o to, že když si vybíráš chrut, pro který byl díš, tak v tom setting toho projektu je u každého kruhu tu ikonka tuštičky, edit, a když na to klikneš, tak můžeš říct, jaký balíky se mají nainstalovat do chrutu předtím, než začneš build. Takže ty tam dáš SCL build a Python 3.3 pomlčka build a do nastavení dáš, který pro, kterých repozitáře mají být dostupný, tak tam dáš nějaký repozitář s tou kolekcí, z kterého ty balíčky opravdu stáhne a mok před tím, než začne být, ty balíčky nainstaluje do toho kruhu. Takže najednou tam budeš mít tady ty dva balíčky, což je všechno, co potřebuješ na to, abys byl do kolekce. Jo, podívej se na tu vikinu, na ten screenshot tutoriál. Dva, dva, 
na Kopru. Když je v Kopru je dole projekt, projekt homepage, user documentation, screenshot tutorial a tam dva slidy od konce. Tady, tady, tady. Znáš YouTube na pětu? Znám. Znám, budeme ho teď používat. Právě stejně tak, stejnou metodou, jak v Kopru jsme teď vyhodili pomocí z Gitu přímo, tak tam budeme teď přidávat, že pomocí pip to RPM, že budeme vyhodit přímo uh, directly z, z, z PyPy. Plus tam bude release monitoring, takže jakmile release monitoring uh, nám pošle zprávu, že na PyPy vyšel něco nového. Uh,